Hi everyone and welcome. I am Kim B, the owner of Youthful Fiber Farm and Mill, and I'm sitting here in my house in Harrisburg, Oregon. And I'm taking a few days off, but wanted to get out this episode because it is all about my Shetland processing from shearing. So I've got some shearing videos in here all the way through carding, ready to be hand spun. And at the time of this recording, there are two four ounce amounts of the Shetland that I talk about in this video available still in roving form. So jump over there quickly if you are interested in getting some of this long staple wool that I go on about. So welcome, welcome. If you are returning, thanks so much for coming back. You'll recognize the sweater I have on. I'll talk about it in just a sec very quickly. And if you're new, thank you so much for, I'm glad you found me. I'm glad you found me. I talk a lot about wool processing, having sheep, having animals, knitting, spinning, all those things. So welcome. Uh, I'm not going to talk too long. I wanted to talk briefly about Shetland before the videos start and also show you my absolutely finished calliope sweater. Let's see how far I can stand back to show you all. And I love it. I wore it out the other night and um, it fits really well. You can see, just to talk about it for a sec, I did about three quarter length sleeves on it. Oops, sorry, that was my microphone. Um, and I did a bit of a long ribbing, but not as long as the pattern calls for. I just was worried. I wanted it to look like I was doing three quarter mindfully and not like I just didn't knit my sleeves long enough. So uh, I didn't really make any modifications other than I knit an extra inch or so on the body and I did get an extra inch when I blocked it. So I did some good blocking on it to get a little bit extra length. And then, um, like I said, I just did three quarter sleeves. I did the, I'm gonna say I did the sleeves. Actually, because I am a little taller, I did the sleeves. Um, I think she calls for seven inches or so on the sleeves. And I think I did that and I just did my ribbing a little bit shorter, but I'm really happy with it. It's so comfortable and um, doesn't itch. It doesn't itch. And it, it's a Cormo Sincere Sheep Wool. Sorry, I'm still adjusting. <laughs> Why stop? I'll just keep adjusting the camera. Um, Sincere Sheep Cormo, which I have some of in my online shop and I held it with Utopia's mohair silk and it's a kid mohair silk. I um, find it to be just fine and it's warm, which it's really cold here today, you all. The camera is just driving me crazy and I don't know why. Is it me? Is it the camera? Is it my house? I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna stop now. So let's talk Shetland for just a minute. I'm not gonna stop. I'm never gonna stop. And here's Tabitha. If you got tired of seeing Wishy Wish, here's Tabitha. <laughs> Tabitha the cat. Okay, so quickly, Shetland, uh, this is, so this video shows from shearing. So if you have, are caught up on watching my videos, uh, probably four or five episodes ago, I did the shearing videos and this shearing video was in that. So you may be bored by it. Or if you've been listening, you may be bored by it. And also the skirting video is a repeat from an episode right after that. So you could, after I'm done talking here, you could skip the next 12 minutes if you're, uh, watching there's chapters so you can just go to that if you're listening on the audio only just skip ahead 12 minutes and you'll get to the washer uh but i wanted to show you really quickly just because this was a full year of growth i wanted to show you a sample of that compared to six months um and in hindsight or not in hindsight, having done this experiment of going back to every year, which is pretty standard and traditional for Shetland. Most people do every year. Uh, I think what I'll probably do is do 50-50. Uh, my older Shetland, I will probably shear just once a year. My younger crew, I'll probably stick to shearing twice a year. Uh, because my older crew are just putting out less wool. So doing a year on them seems fine. What I love about every six months is how much cleaner the wool is, how much less VM there is in it, how much just wear and tear it's gotten on it versus a full year. It just processes up like a dream. But I love the length that comes in. Well, you'll see sometimes I don't always love the length, but let me show you. So this is a full year. And I even wrote, I think I showed this in the video, but this is a full year of Roland. And he's one of our younger sheep. And that is 
That is crazy long. I didn't measure it, but it's solidly over six inches. Um, so there it is up close and you can see there's some dirty bits. I mean, that's not bad considering, <laughs> uh, Roland's fleece was pretty exceptional as far as cleanliness. What I, I, I almost think the weight wise, this ended up being a wash because I probably got a little bit more out of this longer wool, but I had to throw so much belly wool out, which I generally speaking, don't necessarily have to do on those six month shearings with my sheep. So this had a little bit more weight to it, these fleeces, but not significantly because there was more waste just from the elements. Uh, so there's six months. Here's six months. This one is raw still. Um, here is six months off of Moira. Still very long. And you can see those kind of longer tog type fibers on top. But, you know, a little bit shorter than... Rollins. And then I just wanted to show you too, because then there's plenty of parts because Shetlands are not evenly grown. Like where you can strive for that in a lot of breeds for from head to tail that they have the same staple length throughout. That's not necessarily something that's easy to do in a Shetland because it's just not their heritage breed. And that's just not how they grow necessarily. They have different coats and they have different lengths. Generally what's around their neck is the finest and also shorter. Whereas on their bodies, it's going to be thicker and longer. And, um, so anyway, this also came off of Moira. So this is probably where Moira is pulling about five inches on her yearly growth. This other length, is probably three, two to three inches. So significantly different. And this is the same fleece, same year, same animal. Just that's the way of Shetlands. That is the way of Shetlands. So you could in theory separate stuff out much more than I do. And I will be selling some of my fleeces, my Patreon patrons. So my paid Patreon subscribers are going to get first dibs at those, but that starts at $5 and there's so many amazing stuff. I've talked so much about the Patreon. I'm not going to do it in this time, but check it out if you want. There'll be a link in the show notes. I'll talk about it more later because we're having a lot of fun and patrons, I'm going to propose we do a little spin along in there too. So um, besides the one we're going to do for everybody. Okay. Let me show you six months of sharing off of some of my different sheep. Look at how baby that looks. So this is even, I mean, if you include kind of these more toggy long hairs at top, it's actually shorter than Moira Rose's short fiber from her year fleece. Um, that undercoat there, which you can see really clearly in the six months. The six months, the undercoat is um, maybe two inches and then that tog is another inch or so. Uh, here's another one of my darker fleeces. I haven't skirted my darker girls fleeces yet from this year, but you can see how short. So that's why I lean towards um, letting my older girls. This is from one of my older girls. These are some of my um, younger sheep, I think. So very different. Let me hold one of these up. So this is one of my younger sheep. Um, hello versus a year. It's insane. I mean, we're talking four inches more easily off of that. So um, we'll see. Some of it will be game time decision. I just really wanted you all to see. Let me hold up a Moira because um, one of these probably is Moira. So six months versus one year. Can you even with that? I mean, that's crazy. So we'll see. I love letting them grow more traditionally a year, but processing is something else. But anyway, that's enough. I talk plenty about Shetland in the next video. So like I said, if you're listening to the audio only version and you're caught up, skip ahead 12 minutes and you will get to where I start washing it. If you are watching, then you can just look at the chapters and skip ahead if you want to. But this will take you from uh, shearing, skirting, washing, picking, the picking was a challenge and carding. Uh, so let's head to it. Okay. See you on the other side. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I made notes and then I completely almost forgot because I left the notes downstairs to mention that I am doing a collab right now with Revolution Fibers and they are offering my online course. Let's make yarn for free. 
if you buy a new spinning wheel from them. Uh, so this is something we're trying out together to see how it works so far. Some new students, I've got new students and they've got new wheels going out. So really exciting. I will put a link in my show notes to their um, website and their special where all the details are. It's not on my website, it's on their website. And, um, but you get my free course. It's $147 value when you buy a wheel from them. So you can kind of just take the price of the wheel, like knock that down in your head as far as money you're saving and you get a great course. So uh, anyway, if you're interested, head to my show notes and follow the links to get to that collab. Okay, back to what I was saying before. <laughs> okay. There's so much, will you want to walk? You can come stand over here where you can see if you want. They're huge. We didn't cheer them. We usually do six months, but this is a year. So if you stand kind of over in that corner, you can see really well. And and I've got they're baby eggs, but they're just a gift for you. They're not baby. They're just they're like the smaller ones that when I'm selling them, I try to give bigger ones but some of the hens just make small eggs so okay. what are you gonna do so, okay. have you seen this sheep before I've seen it in the yeah it's very different it's almost like a blanket like it's only one piece of it is and because i have only they haven't been shorn this usually i shear them every six months but yeah. i decided to go back to every year to try it um so they're even more dense I mean, when you see, uh, it won't be as long as the fleece is maintained because they were just out in the elements more. Um, that's your cheer. Oh, alpaca are drama, drama, drama. You know, the drama llama thing, it's real. Most of the time, I mean, he did our one sheep that's kind of the worst, but let's gill as a cheer and like, Knowing how to handle them, having the right demeanor, it's why. Um, and I know mm -hmm. oh, we hope so. Otherwise, I let them grow it for a year, and it's, it's huh? I know. This is Patrick. Patrick. Mm hmm I remember when Johnny Rose Johnny mm -hmm. was a baby. Yes. He's he's got beautiful wool. Oh, yeah. He's in there. This is only the second one we've done so far. And obviously you can leave anytime. You don't have to oh, wait no, the whole time, but um, I might sell one or two fleeces. Usually I just process it out into fiber for hand spinners. Um, and I used to do yarn. I used to make yarn at the mill with it, which is why I would shear more often because I need the, the staple length to be shorter when you're making that yarn on the machine. But since it's all being hand spun now, it can be long and hand spit. Look at that. Oh, goodness, buddy. <laughs> Good job, Patrick. Oh my God. And it's nice and warm when it comes off of them. I wonder if they feel better with it off. I think they do. Yeah. I mean, uh, the first couple hours, they won't. Some of them don't recognize each other because the smell is different. Um, but it's got to feel nice to get a fresh start, right? Mm-hmm, right. This is much easier with the tripod. <laughs> I'm like, I'm getting fancy this year. Michael, why are sheep? All right, I do not have my microphone. So hopefully you'll be able to hear this. Okay, but I wanted to get one fleece in for you all. I've skirted one or two. 
And uh, this is David Rose's fleece. It's very large for what I'm used to. And I can see right here, well, you can see that big chunk of hay. I'm just going to yank it out because I can see it. I can tell this is probably neck just by what is coming off here. So I'm going to roll this out. And <clears throat> I think that's another one. Uh, so this is the cut side that is showing, but I'm going to flip it. As you probably noticed in the video, I am not an expert roller. I just like grab and go just to get out of the shears away. So, unless it's very rainy and chilly today, so I won't be out here for too long with you all. But I just wanted to give you an idea of how one of these fleeces looks on the inside. I'll do some more as I keep going through them. But First, I'll just go through the edges, and um, and you can see, I have said this before in other skirting videos, I don't really care which end is the, I don't try to identify, like, this is the top, this is the bottom. As I'm skirting, it will become obvious, like, I can see Brit's wool down here, and actually, it's in pretty good shape. Some of the ones I've done so far, what I've done, a lot of times on these Shetlands, if I was shearing them twice a year, I could save the... Um, belly wool because it's not that worn because of course the belly wool is just dragging along the ground especially as it gets longer their bellies are just hitting all the mud and everything else that can come along so it gets really worn and this year because I let them go to a year the belly is quite long and I'm going along and just picking out second cuts cleaning up the edges where there could be uh, some felting, which has happened a little bit with these fleeces. This is actually really probably the cleanest one that I have skirted. When you get to the neck area, you'll see lots of DM. So I know this was the back end of him because this is all rich wool back here. Kind of the stuff that's on their legs and um, by their butts. So it picks up extra stuff. So most of the time, the immediate stuff, I'll toss. Uh, depend, and then I just look at it. Like this year, I'm kind of taking the belly wool and I'm setting it aside in a separate bag because I want to see how it washes up. It's dirty, but it's still strong. So, so I pull some of the brick wool off and I'll show you all. So you can see how dense that bridge wool is and it's got some you know it's just got the stuff in it and some of it I'll keep some of it and I'll put it in that questionable pile and wash it and see what it looks like you know some of that rougher stuff you can you know do more like weaving yarn with but you know if you wanted to do a heavier not next to skin wool with it so not that all weaving is done with wool like that but it's a good place for it so I just go along and pick out this and I'll show you kind of in comparison like here's a nice non virtual chunk and so I'm just gonna there really isn't that much honestly and what I've been doing with the other fleeces is I've been pulling bits I don't leave them intact because I don't care they're gonna go in the washer so it doesn't matter to me if they are intact so I'm gonna pull a big chunk off and then what I do this is a lovely thing to do and I'll see if I can get it on video here without messing up too much I'll just take it and give it a good shake out so any second cuts that happened any VM that I can possibly have fall out here that's what I'm gonna do there actually isn't I haven't gotten to the neck yet but this fleece is pretty clean there's gonna be some but I'm gonna go ahead and stick this batch back in the bag. So I just kind of work in chunks. The first time I tried to do a fleece, of course I was feeding my sheep in more like hanging things from the wall, hanging feeders, and it was just, oh, there was so much feeding. So I can see, and I'll, sorry, I didn't change you guys. Oops, make y'all sick. There's a lot more VM in this area, and that's gonna kind of be the neck area. A lot of times I'll just pull that because 
quite honestly, it's just easier than trying to take out, you know, if it's a really heavy VM, it's just easier to take that chunk out because you're not going to get that VM out. And we're coming up, it's kind of chesty area. So I'm just going to take another piece off and I'll give it a good shake. And there's a spot that's a little bit weathered. So this is like not really salvageable and it's full of EM and it's a little bit felted. So that goes into the waste pile. So I'll just go through, let me show you a little bit of belly because we've got some belly here and it's pretty, there's a lot of stuff picked up on it. This is belly. So you can see how much just stuff off the ground it picked up. Um, it's a, just a lot more weathered. I'll pull some out. You can see how it's got quite a bit of dirt in there. Still strong though. So what I'll do for this sheep, I'm going to pull around it. Some of that I'm just going to let go of. And I'm going to pull. That's going to get shaken. We will pull quite a bit of this. It's pretty heavy in VM and it's pretty worked. And this is kind of the stomach stuff. So it'll make great compost or it'll make a great mulch. And then some of this other stomach stuff that's not quite so weathered, I'm gonna pull and I'm gonna add it into my, like wash it on its own pile. And then I'll just go through the rest of them. You can save whatever you want of a fleece. You know, they say throw bridge wool out, throw stomach out, throw all that stuff out. Totally up to you, it's your fleece if you buy one and it may take a little more work or it may be waste. It's, it's just up to you. Anyway, so this is kind of our, you can see, let me pull a nice staple out of here so you can see what David did. Here's a David staple. This is kind of standard of what I'm getting. I'd say about six inches. Um, my hand is about six inches long, so Anyway, I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna finish the rest of this. I'm gonna give it some shakes. It's a really lovely fleece. I didn't show just, but you kinda, hopefully you can hear that. That's kind of the ping test to say it's healthy, it's not breaking on me, and this fleece is a go. So, I'm gonna go ahead and keep working on this. I'll catch you all on the flip side. Okay, we're at the washing machine and we have got, let's see how gorgeous that is. This is Roland's fleece. He, I'll show you here in a second. So you'll see I am just opening up the fleece pretty well as I um, load it into the washer. His fleece weighed in at just about four pounds and I actually didn't need to skirt as much with his. Um, part of that might be we brought him in and um, because his horns needed trimming. So we actually brought him in uh, probably two months before shearing. And while we had him in, we did feet and things like that. And we also clipped up a bunch of hair down around his penis area, a bunch of wool, I should say, uh, because occasionally all that stuff can get so gunky around there that they can actually get infections in their penis, which is not pretty just in that area. So while we had him in, I thought, let's just go ahead and trim up the hair right around his private area there. I don't know if that helped or what, but he just he probably just is his type of wool that he, his belly wool even was not was long and beautiful and um, not super gunky, which is weird. So I pulled some of it, but not as much as I've had to pull on some of the other Shetlands. So that's always nice. And you'll see, I'm just opening stuff up as I go along. I'm still picking at it. Always, always, always picking with wool because 
most of the time there's more VM or you know, just things. So I thought I'd show you real quick that this is one of his, oops, sorry, staples. Holy cow. I don't think I have, but we'll put it on my hand, which is about six inches from, you know, so we're a solid six and a half inches or so. Um, he did not mess around in his sleep of all of that I have done so far, which this is, I think, my fifth fleece that I have skirted out so far. He wins on all of the lamb fleeces from these were our, I'm gonna say 2020, 2021 maybe, lambs. I'm not lambing anymore. So anyway, I will finish this up and then I'll cut to as I start the washer. Okay, so the fleece is all opened up in there. I've got the full four pound fleece in the washer and I'm just going to shut this up and let you all see. Lots of you have seen before, but in case you wanna see, my soap container is over here. So I've got, soap is already filled up enough. I have a good stir just because it sat overnight and this is kind of a cold part of the building. The water has been running, so I know I have got it reset which cycle we're on. And I just hit play. And it feed, right now it's gonna feed in soap and water into the machine and then it'll leap and I'll come back and push everything down and it will take, it'll soak for about 20 minutes and then do two rinses afterwards. And I just kind of make sure all is sounding well and looking well, but otherwise it does its own thing. Okay, see ya at the picker. All right, you all, so I wanted to show you some fun in the fiber mill. Oh, not fun. So this is some of my Shetland coming out of the picker. And you can see it looks a little bit neppy. And look at this, look at that. Oh, I hate to see that. Um, and that is basically because the fiber is so long um, that my picker doesn't love it, doesn't love it. So um, some of it is second cuts and other things. And what happens is this actually will, and my humidity is good. I have tried this in a couple different humidities over the next last few days. Humidity is good. The fiber is just too long. And I've had this before with Shetland and I know that it does card out okay. There's a few little nips, but it's nothing. It really does card a lot of it out. But I can't stand to see my fiber this way and I can't stand um, to lose what I'm losing in the rollers. So what I am doing, so you can see that. Now here is some that I just went ahead and handpicked and it's actually I have a bucket that I can put side by side here. So you can kind of see the difference. So you can see that's a little more just not as luxurious looking as that. And, um, and honestly, I was having to open it up so much to go through the picker that I was like, oh, you know what? I am just going to handpick this, which is nothing like handpicking a fine wool because these locks are so long and open. It's really just like what I'd be doing to put it on the picker. And uh, I'm carding it out and I, it's carding. There's really not a big difference in the carding that I can see, but there's definitely, there's a, a bit of, there's a smidge of a difference. But um, so I just wanted you to see when things go awry, how that happens and there is no amount of humidity that was going to of course the more the fibers get caught up in the picker roller the more um, static is caused because then the new fibers are pulling over this stuff that's already stuck creating more static so it's like a no-win situation I just punted um, and it's really not taking me any longer to hand pick it than it would be to pick it so anyway just wanted to share that with you as we go on this long fiber Shetland journey all right, you all, we're in the back of the mill and I am about to stir up. This is some lovely Jacob. It's 
actually, crazy enough, the last of the Jacob that I have from last shearing. And uh, I wanna make some, one last little batch of roving out of this for beginning spinners. And so I had, I actually have one more fleece, I think, that I for some reason believe was a little bit questionable. So I've gotta look through it. But this is the last of two other fleeces I'm washing up and I'm just, giving it a little turn and making sure it's pushed down in the washing machine and then we'll let her rip. Um, so I'm going to make that into roving for some hand spinners. Such a good beginning fiber and I'm going to put you all on the tripod here because I was going to let you see what I am working on. I've got to undo myself. Okay, so we are over by my picker, but as discussed, the picker is not doing the job for me that I want it to do. So I am hand picking the last of this Shetland that was for Fiber Club. There will be more Shetland coming down. Um, if there's any left, Fiber Club people get it first. Um, but after that, it'll go, well, it'll go to Patreon. Uh, so I'm just opening it up. Now this is like night and day from picking out that Merino. I was telling, um, telling them in the Zoom we had yesterday about that I was handpicking this and Judy was laughing saying, didn't you just get done handpicking that Merino? And yes, I did, but this is so different. It's so open and airy already that I'm not doing that much more than I would have been doing trying to get it to run through the picker. And I am not like picking perfectly. Once I, I'll um, pick this out and then I'll condition it so it'll get a little more opened up when I'm moving the conditioners around in the fiber. And then when I go to put it on the carter, I will open up anything else that needs opening then. And I am opening it just over the bare floor and then popping it into a um, basket. And I'm opening it over the floor so that all that debris can fall out. Any VM, lots of you know miscellaneous dirt that will, those little dirt particles that'll fall out. So just so I'm not just picking it and adding dirt straight on top of what I just picked. So I'll just go through, it's so much better, you all, night and day better than if I was trying to put this through the picker where I would basically be trying to open the fiber up a bunch so that the picker wouldn't eat it up. And then, you know, then taking the time to put it through the picker. So this may, this is probably faster and I'm not gonna get as much loss because the picker's not gonna eat up so much of it. And now if I were doing this at home to process, I would be going slower first off because here at home you don't have, you're not trying to produce as much. And I would be making a bigger effort to actually like pull these fibers apart where I'm just kind of doing some basic stretching. If I were at home, I would probably be trying to like actually pull things apart. Uh, instead of this kind of fast way that I'm doing it. Just so you know, that's the difference that I would be doing at home versus here. And part of it is that I know my equipment can, I know that the carter can make a clean go of this after I've got the fiber at a certain level of picked. Um, Okay, you all, here we are at the Carter with the Shetland and it's doing beautifully today. And you can see, I'm just gonna keep picking as I'm going, not only picking out VM, but uh, just picking at the fiber as it goes onto the Carter. And if you watched uh, my last episode, you'll have seen where the Carter picked up a big chunk of fiber off of my intake belt 
much faster than I want it to. So that's why I talk about, you can keep an eye on how I'll kind of pull chunks. Uh, that way, if it decides to pull a, a bit off of the feed before it's ready, it's not getting everything on my intake. It's just getting small chunks at a time. And usually then it doesn't love it, but it will process it. And I don't have to actually even stop the machine. In fact, it's probably best not to stop the machine. Just let it process through and let it process through. So I'm just going to feed this in and it's carding up really lovely. I'm able to feed like my normal amount that I usually feed in at a time. I'm not having to go lighter or heavier. I'm running the machine at the normal speed. So it loves Shetland. It's just the picker. Now, if this was even longer, I would say it wouldn't love it so much, but because it's still kind of in its happy place. Okay, let's go over and see uh, how we're carting up here. Oh, it's so luscious. It is so luscious. And it's got just this lovely gray bits to it from, I mean, most of these sheep are white with gray, other than Alexis, who's all white. So it's, um, I was trying to get fancy, but you know what? It's just gotta be in my hand to show you. So it's carding up really lovely. It's gonna be nice to spin. I did spin a little sample of it and was like, oh my goodness, my hands can be so far apart from each other when spinning short forward. So that's kind of fun. Okay, there you go. There is our processing Shetland. All right, there you go. There's the whole process. I should have gotten one of me hand spinning it, but I didn't. And since there's only two left and they're basically exactly at the four ounces at this point, I didn't want to mess with them. I would prefer those of you that want to try to spin it to have a go at it. So uh, I will try to remember to put a link in the show notes to those, but it's pretty easy to find in my website. Okay, I think that is all I have for this time. If you are interested, if you're thinking about buying a spinning wheel and you want to get in on that collab with Revolution Fibers, head to the link in the show notes. And uh, until next time, I will see you all next week. Stay healthy, be kind to your neighbors, and make all the pretty things, which is what I plan to do over the next few days as well. I will see you next week. Everybody take care. Thank you for watching and listening.